Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Jurassic World review. Today we take a look at the Chaos Theory Epic Evolution Strike Attack Gastonia. Yep, Gastonia here is part of those hard to find Strike Attack slash Danger Pack figures. I have no idea why these size classes are so hard for collectors to track down. End up finding mine at Walmart, so your best bet to find this figure is to hit up your local Wally World. Checking out the package really quick, we got Darius and the Allosaurus, which is standard branding for all the Chaos Theory figures. It is part of the Epic Evolution line. It is from a mountain biome, and the color of this uh, Gastonia definitely matches the mountain biome look. Back of the box shows off how to activate the Strike Attack action feature, and then over here are the other Strike Attack figures available in this wave. The Dilophosaurus, the previously reviewed Chasmosaurus, and Monolophosaurus, like I said in the Chasma review. Uh, I have no interest in picking up the Dilophosaurus because the Hammock Collection version exists and not a fan of the new Monolophosaurus uh, sculpt. Much, much preferred uh, the older uh, version, so that will do it for the packaging. Let's crack open this spiky beast and take a closer look. Now, just like its wave mate, the Chasmosaurus, the Gastonia also suffers from absolutely bare bones paint application. But in this figure's case, it actually works for the better. You know, with Epic Evolution, the dinosaurs, you know, have their own biomes that they come from. Gastonia is from the mountain biome, and this figure literally looks like it's been chiseled out of the Rocky Mountains. You have, you know, this dark stone gray for the main body, and you have these frosted snow-capped uh, spikes on top of his back. Really, really works well for this figure. Definitely keeping with the theme of the line. So let's just do a couple quick measurements. Figure is seven inches long from the tip of the snout to the tip of the spiky tail, or 17.8 centimeters, about two and a half inches tall to the tall spikes on his back, or 6.3 centimeters. So, Gastonia in real life is between 15 to 19.7 feet long, or four and a half to six meters. So, I'll put this figure somewhere in the 125 to the 133 scale range. Taking a closer look at this figure, the head sports a very angry look, like most collectors trying to track this figure down. Uh, the head is sculpted in that dark gray stone-colored plastic with that uh, white coloration for the top. You have all those Aussie drums and spike painted nicely and with that white color. Bright yellow eye with a black pupil. And then going down to the back, I absolutely love uh, the uh, the way the spikes are sculpted on this figure. It's not scientifically accurate, but, you know, I do appreciate Mattel's artistic takes uh, on each species. You know, the uh, <clears throat> lower spikes are cast in an off-white plastic. Then you have this bright, brilliant snow-white plastic uh, for the spikes along the top of the back. You have some black flecks mixed in there. It's a nice contrast of, uh, contrast of two different white colorations. And then going down to the sides, the spikes along the body are cast in that stone gray uh, plastic. Going down to the feet and hind legs, uh, toe claws are not painted in. You have just a splash of white paint on the upper thighs. And then going down to the tail, you actually have paint on the tail. I am actually shocked by this because the last couple of figures I uh, reviewed from this line did not have paint on the tail. So that's always a bonus. You have some nice white on the base of the tail with more of those spikes protruding out. So yeah, all around Really cool looking figure. Just love the artistic liberties they took with Gastonia. For articulation, the head actually has articulation. There is a ball joint. The head can move down and upwards just a little bit. It can also rotate 360 degrees. That is a nice surprise, especially on a strike attack feature. Uh, the arms can swing out. They are also on a hinge joint, the front arms, and they can move backwards and forwards, hind legs, backwards and forwards. And there is a hip, hip pivot on those hind legs uh no articulation on the tail but that is because it is tied to the action feature and the way you want to activate it is you want to press these pair of spikes right here and it'll cause detail let me just rotate it this way it works a little bit better uh with gravity this way just squeeze both leg joints and the tail will swing <clears throat> side to side and if you don't feel like doing that it actually works just fine if you just sw swing it with your finger if you don't want to activate it with those spikes. And then right here, cleverly hidden on the back is the scan code for those of you who want to scan this into the Fax app. Moving on with comparisons, here it is with Chaos Theory Ben. Next up here it is with its wave mate, the Chasmosaurus, as well as the Chaos Theory Danger Packs, Baby Apatosaurus, and Guan Long. Next up is some of Mattel's other armored dinosaur species. We have the amazing Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus, of course, everyone's favorite Ankylosaurus, Bumpy from Camp Cretaceous. 
Borilla Pelta and Mimi. Uh, we've come a very long way uh, with Mattel sculpting from Mimi. Um, I think they've done a pretty decent job on most of their armored dinosaur. And I, I really, really do like the Gastonia. It just has a lot of character to it. And, you know, my favorite uh, armored dinosaur Mattel so far is the uh, Borilla Pelta. Just absolutely stellar sculpt on that thing. Next up, we have Holland Goods offering of Gastonia. For those who want to know what an accurate representation of Gastonia looks like. And this figure actually only came out just over a month ago. So, you know, Gastonia get a little bit of love uh, from the dinosaur toy companies as of late. And lastly, for comparisons, here it is with the Kenner Jurassic Park Series 2 Utah Raptor. The reason Gastonia is kind of known among casual dinosaur fans is because it was found in the same formation as the very popular Utah Raptors from the Cedar Mountain Formation, more specifically the Yellow Cat Quarry. Um, it kind of blows my mind that Mattel has not done a Utah Raptor yet since it's such a popular species. And speaking of Utah Raptor, here it is with a feathered version. This is the Beast of the Mesozoic version of Utah Raptor, which is 118 scale, which means it does fit pretty well into Mattel's line. So final thoughts on Mattel's Gastonia. It's a really fun figure. I just love the character that this figure oozes. The whole body looks like it's been chiseled out of a mountainside with that stone gray for the uh, base plastic and the frosted snow cap uh, peaks for the spikes on his back. Just really fits into the epic evolution line. So yeah, definitely, definitely love this figure. Uh, like I said, begin the review. You can track these figures down at your local Wally World. Uh, so good luck on the hunt. Uh, so that will do it for the review. I'm actually slightly kind of catching up on rev my reviews. Uh, you know, sometime this century, the uh, Ben Cast Theory set review will premiere on the channel, whatever. Um, and I did pre-order, uh, you know, some of the new PNSO and Holland Good stuff. So be on the lookout for that. As always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps up the channel tremendously. It's greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys for the next one.